uh, Mr. Irish Bastard. I oh, think yeah. you know they're pretty good. Um, I, yeah. I haven't seen them live yet. I mean, to me, the true, the true nature of like that style of music is like seeing it live. Yeah, yeah. Because um, I think it has to have that energy and fun to it. So sometimes I'll hear someone, um, you know, on on a CD and oh, this sounds pretty good, and then you see them live and it just doesn't really like. Yeah kind of have the atmosphere that yeah. it needs to and um so yeah there are a ton of bands playing it but you know what it's fun as hell music to play i can yeah, attest to it firsthand so why wouldn't you you know i do think it's kind of hard for that next generation of band to kind of come up and make it i don't want to say make it but you know like create a big following because yeah. there's it is hard to not be repetitive and stuff like mm. um you know i, I mean you know, when we started doing it really in the 90s, you know, even even though at the time we didn't have as much instrumentation as we did, but it was it was still there. We just, all our friends that played all those instruments were all cops or whatever that didn't want to quit their job. But, um, you know, there wasn't a lot of it happening. So I think like, when, for instance, when we released the song Barroom Hero on the Give Them the Boot compilation and you heard bagpipes, people just went locked up, you know? Yeah. And um, I think that was how we got our hooks into people, you know? And, um, it's t it's tough in, in any form of music really with the internet and it, and, it, and it gives so many more chances to reach people but then there's so many more bands that are reaching people how do yeah. you differentiate yourself you know and um, I mean we started when we started we were back you know I remember with me and Matt used to sit in the practice space you know and just you know press our own t-shirts you know answer all the fan mail press our own albums you know write in and just spend whole days building that core cool, slow fan base and really there's um there's no substitute for that you know what i mean because um if someone finds out out, out about you easily and quickly oftentimes they move on easily and quickly too yeah. so um yeah we i guess we've been fortunate i don't know much about i mean we have to fit into the new world of the music business but i'm glad that we started when we started oh, and, you know yeah so. so the tours are getting bigger every album the venue is getting bigger do you miss the the more intimate show, or um, does it matter? No, because there's always going to be the next country where we're not as popular and we're doing a thousand seater or whatever. Yeah. So um, I don't know. I think uh, there's a unique atmosphere to what we do. You know, I mean, I'm not going to say if you're playing in, in an arena to twenty thousand people, it might not get like, oh crap, I'm up in the balcony. I don't feel this, but yeah. like, you know, tonight, like five thousand people all on the floor. It's like there's an energy in that that you don't get you know what i mean when you're doing a thousand people because yeah. it's just the mass of it i mean i like it when it's like a nice big open floor like this when you get into like like arenas and stuff you know but then again like we'll play a small arena in massachusetts and there's that element because as we've crossed into like like different generations and family they'll be you know they might they might allow 2500 kids on the floor to go nuts but there's another 4,000 that are happy to be in a seat yeah. with a good view yeah. so it, it's kind of good because it can accommodate everyone you know um, we see especially in the states and more and more over here you see like kids with family you know parents yeah. come the parents like the music kid does let the kid go down front and tear it up and the parents yeah. go up and sit in a seat and get hammered or something you know um, so yeah it's it works for us you know and I think we're so used to playing the festivals too that yeah. We found a way to not be like, oh my God, this is too big, you know. So, and I think with having like a front man that can get down and create that connection with the audience, it, that's what keeps it like mm -hmm. that for us. Whereas if like we all played instruments and when the stage got farther away, we couldn't bridge the gap, then it would definitely get, you know, the distance would probably start to bother us, you know. So no plans for a Harper's Ferry kind of. Well, yeah, well, yeah, we're actually, it's called Brighton Music Hall, and we're playing there the Sunday night of um, St. Patrick's Day this year. We're doing no advance tickets, just show up at the door, get, you know, old, total old school, us and the Ducky Boys, who was the band oh, we great, started yeah. out with, and, um, you know, but that was just kind of to have fun, and yeah, you know, so we're totally up for them, I and that holds 300 people, so it's like, you know, um, yeah, we'll do that stuff, you know, when, when the circumstance show. permits, you know, yeah. sure. So, the St. Patrick's show is coming up, from me being there as a fan, it's a... A great few days, yeah. a very tiring few days, yeah. and a drunken few days. But yeah. what's it like for the band? So many shows, and I think the last time I saw it, six shows in four days or something. Yeah, um, we've, we've we've tended to tone that down a little. Like before, you know, um, the, the, we've done a few. I think this year it's um, I think it's uh, five hundred 
five, uh, six shows in five days, you know, so I guess it's not getting much better. <laughs> but, uh, um, not slowing down much. Yeah, but, um, you know, it's awesome. I mean, there's the demand. You know, we used to, like, what all... A lot of the other stuff like, is what used to get to us. Like, you know, you're up in the morning, we do, they have, like, a political... You know, all the politicians yep. have, like, a roast, and, you know, we would go do that because it's a very famous tradition, and, and then it would be in the parade, and there'd just be so many other things pulling you yep. away. Um, now we kind of just say screw all that and just try to do the shows and yeah. um you know to be able to go to like mcgreevy's afterwards and hang out with the fans and have a place you can kind of make contact with the people who come all the time you know and um and just the backstage to see all the friends and family um it's really cool it's like you know when you're in a band and you're mm -hmm. traveling all yeah you miss out on a lot of stuff and seeing a lot of people so to have like everybody in your life in the same like after party is yeah. it's actually it's a little overwhelming it's just like whoa everybody's here at once you know and trying to talk to everyone but it's it's awesome i mean it's yeah i, don't, I can't you know i can't even put it into words you know but um we look forward to it every year you know oh it's it's even that's kind of like our new year's the, the, the yeah. year starts and ends there you yeah. know what i mean so no, I showed there one time. Your, I think your grandmother was there. Your yeah. mother. Yeah. Everyone. That my daughter. Time. Three generations of women in my life. On my wife, I guess we have four yeah. generations. You know, uh, my grandmother was just at our shows at Fenway Park. She had just had uh, not not quadruple, but one more, five quintuple, uh, whatever uh, bypass. Yeah. And she's standing at the front row watching us at Fenway. You know, and uh, it's it's awesome to be able to play a form of music that yeah. you know is hot enough that the kids like it but has enough roots and melody that an 88-year-old woman can come and like it, too. Yep. That's pretty unique, you know what I mean? Like, if I was in a metal band, you know, it wouldn't feel as good to me because yeah. you wouldn't be able to share it with everybody. Oh, yeah. Like, he just played, I don't know, it's a metal <laughs> band, what the hell, you know? So it's, for all the people that play this type of music, I think that's one of the most fortunate things yep. that we have going for us, you know? Great. Is the new album on your, your own label again? Yeah, yeah, yep. Born and Bred Records. Um, I'm gonna start doing some vinyl too, and um, yeah, it's exciting to kind of just have uh, have the the ball in your own hands, you know, and yeah. not have to like worry about it. Well, you know, if you screw up and it doesn't go right, you only have yourself to blame, you know. So we have we have. It's not like like you know, it's not like I'm out there shipping the orders. We have yeah. capable people helping yeah. us do it, but but no control. one's telling us yeah we've never had i mean i hear these stories about <coughs> you know labels coming in and telling listening to a band's demos and saying go back and start over or change this or fire a band member or i mean i've literally when we were in epitaph records for all those years uh, literally we used to joke we should make an album on a boom box and send it to them and they'd probably press it and put it out yeah. but that's nice i think people trusted that we would put a good you know work and effort into it but yeah. um it was, it, I just can't even fathom someone in a suit or some yeah. douchebag coming in and saying, like, you got to change this pot. I'm like, what? You know? So we are fortunate never had to deal with that, even when we were on Epitaph. But the thing with Epitaph was, like, they were West Coast label, we were East Coast guys, and it was just, there was just a disconnect of some sort, you know what I mean? Yeah. And, and, and instead of being those miserable whinges that are like, ah, the label, the label, it's like, let's just do it ourselves. That's how yeah. we started doing our own records, you know, yeah. flat records. That, I had a label doing little local bands in seven inches, and so we've gone full circle. <laughs> Is there any plans to release any other bands on the label? We haven't yet because um, we still feel like we're able to do what we do because we self-market. We go out and do it, you know what I mean? And it's like, um, I guess if a band who was of our nature, you know, could do it, but here's the thing, if a band was our size and could really do it themselves, I would advise them to do just what we did. Yeah, yeah. Don't let us do it for you. Do it yourself as well, because you can cut <coughs> a distribution deal and you know make more money. So if it's a band that needs the help, it's a little harder because we really do rely, and this is why it's good for us financially. We're not out spending frivolous money. We we're able to say, hey, don't spend that money on that. We'll just go out and play there, you know, or we'll be in touch with our fans. We don't need to take this ad that costs twenty thousand yeah. dollars. Um, so in some ways, when it is a band that needs the ad that costs twenty thousand dollars, we don't even know how to operate in that world. So yeah. it's this unique, funny thing, you know. Um, you know, if the right band came to us, we'd definitely do it. But like I said, our goal is not to turn into some mogul record label. Yeah, like yeah. if I'd rather just pass on the phone number to the distributor and say, yeah. you know, do it yourself, you know. So. So no new Boston no. bands coming up. 
There's so uh, many great bands out yeah, there. Yeah, there are. Yeah, there really are. It's just, you know, it's, it's um, a lot of bands, you know, I, my heart was broken a lot of times too. Like when I had my own label, it was like, I'd work and work and work and put up the band, and then they just break up over the littlest, <laughs> tiniest hot, hardship, you know, and I'm like, man, being in a band, you got to work through that stuff, you know what I mean? It's 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 a lot goes into it. It's not always easy. We get seven guys. We all get along great. It's kind of yeah. like brothers, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like because there's an age gap, and but there's an, there's this like an ultimate underlying respect for each other that makes it work. But that doesn't mean you don't have to work through issues like a family would or anything else. And um, some bands just I think some bands just kind of think like they could if they're having success they could just stop it and recapture it yeah. anywhere else. And like I know like I like. Dropkick Murphys has had the most unbelievable, I don't want to say luck, but like good good fortune. And it's like, it's for one guy in the band to go like, fuck it, I'll just start another one. It's yeah. like, I, we've had guys try to do that. And yeah. I don't know where they are now, you know what I mean? Yeah. And I don't mean that as, as a knock. I mean, they were very forthright about it. And so yeah. like, hey, I want to do something different. And I think everybody always goes, whoa, it's ugly out there, you know? So We were just talking about that on the way here tonight yeah. from a... Other members are left. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's just it, it happens, and yeah. the people, you know, have musical differences. They, uh, I mean, well, I, I can honestly say, we, with all the people that have left this band, we friendly with everybody. Everyone still comes to shows when we're there where they live, and I, I'm very proud of that. You know, like yeah. even employees, even, like, like everybody still gets along. I don't have anybody that's like, ah, we had this bad falling <coughs> out. I think that just goes to show kind of what the band's all about. But um, but yeah, it's it's tough. It's tough out there. So we were reading today uh, an article online, a bet you have with a bar owner in New York, yeah, Shepherd's yeah. Pie. Shepherd's Pie, yeah. Um, mutual friend kind of, a mutual friend kind of started an email chain and threw the bomb in there and kind of said, you, you know, and, uh, you know, Andy, Bep, I mean, you know, pa Patriots in the Super Bowl, big deal. But playing a New York team, bigger deal. Rematch versus the Giants who pulled off the and luckiest thing I've ever seen in the century and ironically the last time that for that game we were out of the country as well we were in Aberdeen Scotland and um, when it happened so um, it's gonna be like oh man the same thing all over again watching it till five in the morning in, in Europe but um you know it just seemed like a fun you know the the, the politicians like the governors or the mayors always make the lame bet you know and I'm like case of clam chowder versus you know and um we just felt like it was kind of a little more i mean to put your money where your mouth is and say aside from the financial of donating the money from the sales of shepherd's pie to have to put on the uh opposing team's jersey and go <laughs> bartend at the other place holy shit I, the only thing that i'm happy with is i know it's not going to be me it's going to be that guy doing it so uh yeah he's a good funny guy he's uh yeah. got a good reputation and he's you know a good promoter and marketer he banned Danny Boy the singing of Danny Boy in his bar and uh, got all kinds of funny press out of that so it's good I'm sure it'll raise a lot of money for charity so great I'm a is going well yeah I'm a is going well I know um, um, you know it's 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 just steady you know it's like it's just a bar which I like about it it's on a street where you know there are the bars but they turn into like discotheques after yeah. 11 you know yeah. and um and we just kind of, we don't do kind of the business they do on weekend nights, but we, we do way more business than them on the weekday <coughs> and when there's games and you know, with the food. And that's what I'm all about. I don't want to be a nightclub owner. Yeah. I want to be somewhere where like, people can go in and like sit down and n see their friends and have a good time. And that's what it's turned into. So, Have you tried the Beckett Burger? Have you I, uh, I haven't finished the Beckett Burger, but honestly, I think our Beckett Burger tastes better than our regular burger because it's a different bun and they put like, more lettuce and tomato on it so like i always tell people when they come in if there's a table i say if you're getting a burger get the beckett burger and cut it yeah. four ways and it tastes better and it raises money for charity so um i think we're going to change it up this year and do something with the new coach uh, uh bobby valentine so I, we, he he apparently invented a sandwich like the wrap or some crazy thing so i i'm going to change it to be like this giant <laughs> wrap which probably be even uglier than a burger to try to hold yeah. together and eat you know but um i guess he's a very um uh charitable guy and does tons of stuff for charity so it'll be nice to you know welcome him and get involved in that way you know great that's it for now yeah unless you have any questions made no <laughs> i think that's excellent cool well thank you guys for thank the time much, and, uh, thanks for talking to us we love it over here and it's we're grateful to have any opportunity to play anywhere but uh especially over here in germany you guys Treat us like family, and uh, we're very grateful for that.